You're listening to the Finding Careers End podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm going solo today to talk about something that's been on my mind a lot lately, and that is what recruiters look for on LinkedIn. I've been on LinkedIn a lot lately, more so than I have in the recent past, and a couple of things have jumped out at me. One is how many people are looking for jobs right now. And I know the numbers, I see the math, I pay attention to what's going on in the market, but when I see how many applicants there are for each job, it really gives me a whole different perspective on what the job market's really like right now. And that is to say, it's not good. The other thing I've noticed is that a lot of people have questions about what to do on LinkedIn, how to use it to give themselves the best opportunity to be found. And that's really what it's all about. So some quick stats on LinkedIn. It is a massive job network. Everyone knows that, but I'm not sure many realize how big it's become. Over 900 million active users right now, 58 million registered companies, 61 million people using it to look for jobs. That is a huge number and a lot of competition for any individual job seeker. My staffing business has been posting job openings lately on LinkedIn. And as I mentioned, I've been alarmed by some of the numbers that I've seen um, we'll have hundreds of applicants within a couple hours of a posting. And historically, I just haven't seen numbers like that. So you really need to uh, do your best, put your best foot forward on LinkedIn to stand out because there's so many other people trying to do the same. Now, here's the good news for any individual job seeker who really wants to maximize their vis visibility. Most people aren't going to do all of those things that they should do. So if you're listening, please take advantage of these tips. Let's just get right to it. Recruiters want to look for people who are professional. You know, everyone has the opportunity to use their own social media platforms as they like, but it doesn't mean that's how they should, not in a professional setting. So if you have social media accounts and you want to do things that may be controversial or let's just say unprofessional, however you define that, consider not doing those things on LinkedIn. Use some of the more... Um, personal you know, social platforms that are out there because recruiters are looking on LinkedIn. They will look you up. Even if they don't find you that way, they will check out your profile and get a feel for what you're all about. So start with a professional headshot. Don't clip anyone out of a picture if you can avoid it. It doesn't have to be professionally taken. It just has to be a professional appearance. So hopefully the difference between that is, is easy to understand. So put your best foot forward with your picture. The next thing is your headline. Recruiters are scanning. They have so many people. As I mentioned, 61 million people are using LinkedIn to find a job right now. So what is going to help you stand out? Well, it's, it's a headline that the recruiter can see, just like if you're in the checkout line looking at magazines, what's going to grab your attention. Newspapers have done it since those you know, they started um, being published. It's all about the headline. So how you want to be found, what you want to be found for, you need to put that in there. Um, and you know, if it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect in terms of coming up with something overly creative or you know, gimmicky. In fact, I would argue against that. You want it to be natural, but you want it to be clear and easy to understand. So start with that good headline before you fill out the rest of your profile. And then put your summary, put it in detail, make it easy for the recruiters who are looking to understand who you are, what you're looking for, what you're all about. Think about, you know, telling a story, right? It's a story of you, the story of your professional life. So as you put this information together, yes, it's ultimately going to be a summary of your professional history and the jobs that you've had. But if you think of it as a story that has a beginning and an end, end is where we are right now then you want the recruiter to be able to see progression. You want the recruiter to see how your career has evolved and don't make them work to try to figure it out. Now, that's probably a recurring theme. I don't know how many times I'm going to mention that in this relatively brief episode. Uh, so if I do it a bunch of times, just know it's because it's important. When recruiters have to stop and guess, it's a really bad thing for the candidate. They won't do it. It is a reality. The recruiter's don't want to have to figure out overlapping data. They don't want to figure out conflicting information between a resume and a LinkedIn profile. So I'll go ahead and say that now, make sure that your resume and your profile on LinkedIn are similar. Now it doesn't have to be exact, but it can't be contradictory, okay? So showcase who you are, if you're passionate, if you're dedicated, if you're enthusiastic about whatever it is you're doing, let it come out in that summary. Um, 
And then, you know, for your experience, same thing, right? It's all part of the same equation. Spell it out, be accurate, be clear, highlight your accomplishments. This is a chance to, um, back to the, the story of you, what have you done? Use you know, statistics, use numbers if you can. If you've been, you know, if you won an award and it's been, the, you know, if you've been the top performer, say you're the top performer. If you've grown um, a sales number a thousand percent year over year, use that number. So the more you can spell out the specifics of what you've accomplished, the easier it is for you to stand out in the eyes of the recruiter who's going to be looking at it. Because again, they're trying to compare you and the moments that they're looking at your profile to everyone else in their candidate pool. And as we've established, those are really large numbers these days. So tell that story, use action verbs where you can and make sure it's quantifiable. Now, one thing you never want to do is exaggerate to a point where you can't back it up. So if it's on your profile, just like anything in a resume or anything you filled out in an application, you have to be able to defend it. So the easiest way to do that, always be accurate, always be honest. And you, you can exaggerate to a point, right? Again, you are you have to be your own marketer with this, but be prepared for anything that's written on your profile or on an application or in your resume to be questioned in an interview and be prepared to explain it in detail. So you don't want to get caught with your hand in the cookie jar there, but toot your own horn. No one else is going to do it for you in this situation. Um, recommendations and endorsements. Okay, I just said no one else is going to do it for you, but actually that's not really the case. You can get people to do it for you. You can ask for recommendations. The more, the better. It's a section that some people disregard completely on LinkedIn, but it's an opportunity for you to have others telling your story as well and have um, those references sort of baked in right from the start on your profile when a recruiter looks at you and encounters you for the first time. So ask for those references um, or recommendations rather and endorsements, take advantage of that section of LinkedIn if you haven't already. Um, and then some of the other things you want to consider, th those are the obvious, right? You, you, your profile has to look good. Your picture has to look good. Your headline has to look good. You have to tell a clear and accurate and compelling story, but what else can you do above and beyond? So, you know, we'll call these advanced tips, if you will. Think of keywords. Think of those things that are going to be on a job description. If you are in a role uh, for any period of time, you know the buzzwords, you know the phrases that are used over and over. Sprinkle those throughout your profile. It, you, just like when you search for something on Google, recruiters are using keyword searches on LinkedIn to find the candidates who most closely match what they need. And what they need is going to be the skills and traits and background that are listed on a job description in some form or fashion. So if you want to match for that job description and be found for those things, well, that's what needs to be on your profile as well. So keywords needs to be searchable. Um, use those common terms for your industry. And the next thing, and this is where, so all of that is sort of behind the scenes, right? Did anyone can do, no excuses not to. I'll go ahead and say that as well. Um, if you haven't taken the time to do those things, and this isn't the only place you can get this information, the internet is littered with it, um, then that's on you, right? Because there really is no excuse. It's just a matter of effort and willingness to do it. This next piece is a little more uncomfortable for a lot of folks, and that is to be engaged. The LinkedIn rewards people who are using their platform, who are communicating with others, and that it's a great way for you to be noticed by uh, those who you want to be found by. So whenever I talk about a job search, I, I often use a phrase, cast a wide net. That's the objective of any job seekers. You want to be found for as many positions as possible, have people coming to you. And if you're engaging on LinkedIn, if you're commenting um, on other posts, if you're building your network, not just by inviting someone or offering to connect with them, I mean, that's, that's easy. Anyone can do that. Take that extra step and you'll get the benefit of being found by more people by expanding your network and having people see who you are and what you're participating for. So I'm, I'm not suggesting necessarily you uh, need to engage people in their personal posts but things that are industry specific. If, um, if you see people who work for a company you aspire to work for, there's a perfect opportunity. If they're actively commenting on LinkedIn and posting and sharing, then you can get to know them that way. You can, you can do that subtly. So active engagement is something that you should 
hundred percent take advantage of. Now there was a job seeker not too long ago. I was watching, it was someone I knew who was looking for a job. And I saw this person who didn't, they weren't really a big LinkedIn user in the past, but during their job search, I noticed that they became very active, telling stories, supporting others, commenting um, multiple times a day. I mean, I, I wasn't keeping that close uh, uh, track, but every time I pulled up LinkedIn, it seemed like this person was making a comment on my feed and being, just being so generous and supportive of others. And it absolutely stood out. Now, I don't know if that's what helped her land a job in particular, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did because her interaction just shot her in the, to the forefront of so many people's LinkedIn uh, page that it had to help her get more attention. And when someone is just being generous and helpful to others, people are going to want to be generous and helpful to them. And I, as I said, I have to assume that that played a part in helping this person to uh, secure what seems to be a really great job. So be engaged, be a participant on LinkedIn, not just a bystander, not an observer. Um, content creation. Now this one is, this one's a little, you know, next level of difficulty, right? Where I'm recommending that if you really want to stand out from the crowd, then you should consider creating your own original content. What story do you have to tell? Now, the earlier you are in your career, probably the more difficult that is to do. Uh, you may not feel qualified. You might, may not feel knowledgeable that you don't have anything to say. Put those feelings aside, right? It, it is your opportunity, as now I think I'm saying for the third time, to toot your own horn. And you can do that by creating original content that will get you noticed. Now, it needs to be relevant. It needs to be on point for what it is you want to be found for and how you want to be thought of. But there's no, um, there's no shortage of routes you can take to come up with ideas. AI has made that very simple for a lot of us now to take advantage of. If you, if you need brainstorming ideas, get on ChatGPT. I'm not saying to use that for your content creation, but it's a great tool to use for ideas and, uh, and tips. So you can see content that other people wrote. You can try to phrase, rephrase it in your own words. You can try to add to it. You can build on it. If you have ideas that have been on your mind for some period of time, everyone has thoughts that um, are in their head, put them on paper, put them on video. And even if you don't want to publish it right away, go ahead and get your feet wet, record yourself. Just like I'm doing right now, um, I've been recording podcasts for a couple of years right now, and it's still not very natural to me, to be completely frank. I'm talking solo today, and that is, um, I feel like a fish out of water when I'm doing that. But I know the subject, I have the experience, I'm not you know, trying to talk about something that I don't have knowledge of. That would be an entirely different deal. So if you have confidence that what you are sharing is accurate, or interesting to someone else. And by the way, if it's interesting to you, it probably is interesting to someone else. Just get on Reddit. If you haven't used that tool, I was uh, talking on a live stream about Reddit the other day, and I made a comment I'll make again here, which is for every interest you may have, there are thousands and thousands of people who have a similar interest. And that's what's made Reddit so successful is that it accommodates every niche anyone could have. So if you have an idea that you think, hey, this is relatively obscure, not that many people may be interested, you may be very surprised to realize that there are a lot of like-minded folks out there who you can connect with. So it doesn't have to satisfy um, a mass group. If you, if you have something that you want to share or content that you think is interesting, it just has to satisfy enough people. And sometimes um, more specific content is going to play out much better because uh, yeah, people will be more interested and take the time on those things that they're you know, personally invested in, right? Uh, either as a hobby or a passion. So try it, try it. Even if it's uncomfortable, go ahead and start posting content, whether it's written, whether it's video, take a shot, create the content, even if you don't want to post it right away, share it with people you trust and rely on, get their honest feedback. And um and I say, go for it, right? Because by not doing it, it won't help you be, be noticed. It won't help you be found. So you may as well take that step. Um, the next thing you know, I'll say is just about networking in general on LinkedIn. There are so many resources that you can take advantage of in terms of groups uh, that are out there. And if, so if you haven't already 
uh, become a member of different groups and seeing what others are doing or who you can follow, right? If you are, um, you know, if you're a senior in your career, you probably have a pretty big network, but if you don't, then you have to build it somewhere. And the way to do that is so easy today. I mean, when I was coming out of school, LinkedIn didn't exist. And so I had to meet one person at a time. And now you have access to hundreds of thousands, I mean, millions of people on LinkedIn. Uh, and some of the groups are massive and have super activity, whether you're in marketing or finance or IT or law, whatever your specialty area is, there are giant groups that of people who are like-minded, who you want to meet, who you want to know, who you can connect with and who you'll be found by. And so rec recruiters look for all of these things. So we're talking about how to get recruited here, what recruiters are looking for. And they want someone who is very easy ultimately. And here, here's, here's the bottom line with what recruiters want. They want to find the perfect candidate with as little effort as possible. Not because they're lazy, but because they want to get to the finish line. The finish line is finding the candidate who's going to be interested in the job that they have that they're recruiting for, who's a good fit for it, who's going to interview well, who has the right background, um, who's going to be liked by the hiring manager, and who's going to want the job. And so if you can tell that story, right, who you are, what you've done, what you're looking for, what you're all about, make that very clear and easy for the recruiter to understand, then you're going to have a successful time being uh, recruited on LinkedIn. If you don't, you're not. So hopefully that this helps. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Questions at Zengig.com. Give me feedback. Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me where the gap is, where you could benefit from having content that we haven't created yet. Also, of course, check out Zengig.com where we have uh, information on pretty much every aspect of the job search, as well as career advice for so many different scenarios. So I won't do a huge commercial on that. But questions at zengig.com. Let me know if you still have any after listening to this um, and good luck with your hunt. Thanks. Have a great day.